Sony just sent over their new $900 flagship gaming monitor. And what I wanna know is, is it the best way to play next gen at your desk? Let's talk about it. Finding TVs that support 4K and fast refresh rates is fairly easy. Take this Hisense UAG, one of the many great options around. At $700, it's the whole enchilada at a reasonable price point. But this is a TV for a living room. Go smaller for a desk setup, and I think the monitor space is lagging behind a bit in terms of product variety. The good news is that we're starting to see more options crop up as next-gen hardware adoption increases. And the newest kid on the block is Sony's Endzone M9 gaming monitor. Not PlayStation, there's a distinction, though the M9's design language indicates otherwise. Certainly not a bad thing at all. The general color scheme and RGB lighting match the console very nicely. And I don't know if this was intentional, but the stand's hinge kind of shares a silhouette with the PlayStation Eye. The M9 is equipped to be your jack-of-all-trades monitor, at least on ports. Two HDMI 2.1 for all of that next-gen goodness, display port, USB-C video, data, and charge up to 15 watts, which is perfect for a phone, probably not for a laptop. There's also a headphone jack, which you might need because the speakers on this thing are god-awful. And best of all, a three-port USB Type-A hub that you could use as a KVM. This means you can hop peripherals like your keyboard, mouse, or headset between two computers. But we'll touch on the specifics a little later in the video because we got to talk about the most important aspect, the picture quality. On paper, the InZone M9 is stacked on specs, as it should be for a brand's flagship monitor, featuring a 27-inch 4K 144Hz IPS panel. It's a sweet spot that balances size, pixel density, and refresh rate. It's a formula that's consistent with a handful of entries in this product category, including the Samsung Odyssey G7 that's behind me that I've been daily driving for a few months here at the Denki Studio. Specifically for the M9, Sony included some features that elevated a step above the others in image quality. At 600 nits peak brightness, it is at the upper end of what sub $1,000 gaming monitors have to offer. But what the M9 absolutely nails compared to its competition is its dynamic range. It's all thanks to this panel's full array backlighting with a whopping 96 dimming zones. Wow! Where dynamic range makes a huge difference is in high contrast scenes with harsh lighting and heavy shadows, like in the cockpit of a car in Gran Turismo 7. It's kind of crazy that I'm able to make out every trim piece and contour and texture on the dashboard despite it being shrouded in shadow compared to the bright daylight that's out the windshield. Admittedly, I don't have any calibration tools on hand to scrutinize the M9's color performance, but Sony claims to offer 95% coverage of DCI P3 color space. To my naked eye, it's it's certainly not as good as the MacBook Pro's Liquid Retina XDR display. Of course, that's not an apples to apples comparison. <laughs> but I bring it up because the M9 is honestly good enough to work in tandem with my laptop to do content creating. Okay, so the InZone M9 looks awesome. But Sony's talking up a big game when it comes to the monitor's user experience. And this is where it both impresses, but also kind of misses the mark. But before I get to that, if you guys like what I do here on Denki Channel, please consider subscribing as it helps us out. If you guys want to rep the channel and also look good while doing it, head over to Denki.store where you could pick up a bunch of stuff, including this RGB shirt. The healthy amount of ports on the back of the M9 preps it for a market where players are diversifying their platforms more than ever. But all you have to do is look at the M9 to know that it pairs the best with PS5 and will optimize its HDR tone mapping specifically to rein in all of that image detail. On the monitor side, the M9 grabs metadata from the PS5 that allows it to change picture modes depending on whether you're playing a game or watching a movie. For example, hop into GT7 and it will trigger its low latency mode with color tastefully optimized for games. Then switch gears to Netflix 
and the M9 will trigger its cinema profile that feels akin to those filmmaker modes that we see on TVs nowadays. But of course, Sony has some tricks to sweeten the pot for your devices that aren't a PS5. Let's run it back to that KVM hub I mentioned earlier. Baseline, it works well. Switching regularly from my desktop on HDMI 2 to my laptop on USB-C, my mouse and keyboard followed without any hesitation. Good. Another convenience feature that Sony added, and probably the one that got me the most hype, is the option of controlling the monitor OSD settings via a Windows companion app and USB. And guys, they give you the whole OSD to play with. Use it to switch picture presets, adjust color, motion, speaker and headphone volume. You can even add a slate of built-in crosshairs. Hilariously, you can even change video inputs on it as well which I imagine is more useful if you have a secondary display in addition to the M9. But if it's your only display, you can literally just tick any of the other inputs and deprive yourself of your screen settings. It also has a neat feature that allows the monitor to automatically change picture presets based on specific programs that are open. Kind of like what it does on the PS5, only in this case, it's a little more involved of a setup where you have to manually bind the games or whatever you want to the preset you want to switch to. If for whatever reason you don't want to install the InZone software on your Windows computer, or if you're on the Mac, at which point it just doesn't exist, this for you. The good news is that the M9 also has a more traditional OSD with a controller on the back to customize your settings. Though, if I'm honest, using a mouse and cursor feels way more intuitive than playing with a nub. Okay, so far I presented the positives. However, these big steps forward for the M9 also present a few oversights that really hold it back. It's certainly cool that you get a built-in KVM similar to what we've seen on Gigabyte's current slate of monitors. But this feature is let down by the fact that you can't switch your inputs easily. There's an input button when you toggle on the OSD, but I much prefer mapping specific input sources that I use the most to cut down on these button presses whenever I can. Even letting the user flip through channels would honestly be more useful. But Sony doesn't even let you do that outside of the monitor searching for a signal. Why? But more than anything else, I wish I didn't have to reach behind the monitor to switch inputs at all. Put the control nub below the screen, or even better, give us a remote like what Gigabyte does to make things even easier. I can't stress enough that the M9, even having a working KVM to begin with, goes a long way for convenience. But it does require going the extra mile to make this a real deal maker for streamers, general enthusiasts, and power users. At 900 US dollars, which is at the top end of this sub $1,000 4K gaming monitor segment, what you're really paying for with the InZone M9 is top-notch picture quality, tons of inputs, and clever optimization tricks when paired with a PS5. Fingers crossed that if there is a Mark II on the horizon, that it improves on what they have here. Because for their first flagship monitor, I think they did a pretty good job, all things considered.